We're back with another episode of That Time I Got Reincarnated in, in the, the Same, same world, world as an Anime Podcaster. I'm Isekai Sensei Sama, otherwise known as Brad, and I'm joined in the Weep Cabal by Kermit the Grog, aka Andrew. Hello, hello, it's me, Kermit the Grog. And Bento Baggins, aka Ben. Konnichiwa. Every time, we're just going to keep doing that. If you're listening for the first time, uh, we're friends who have been watching anime together for a long time and having long discussions about that anime, as well as the manga that we read. So we decided that we should turn those conversations into a podcast. If you're a returning listener, thanks so much for coming back. Welcome back. We're really happy that uh, so many people keep coming back. Yeah, numbers have been cool. It's yeah. been cool. Thanks for thanks for listening, everybody. And uh, for those loyal listeners, stick around until the end to hear about a chance to win a game. Oh, actually, we're going to add to that also a chance to win physical manga. Ooh. Oh, my God. I've seen it. I kind of want it myself. I guess I'll have to enter, but... You should try to beat me to it. Uh, and I especially want to shout out to our German listeners. Uh, I see those people what? in Frankfurt. I see them. They're listening. Oh. Guten Tag, Germany. <laughs> Deutschland, sorry. So we really like to hear from people. Uh, so let us know what you think on social media, like Twitter or Good Pods. And we also now have a brand new website. It's animepodcasterreincarnation.com. And we're going to put up uh, different reviews and news and podcast notes and stuff like that. So make sure you check that out. My esoteric blogs. <laughs> Just a uh, quick news update. Spy Family, uh, the anime has been uh, going on for a little while now. We actually just finished watching the third episode and it is absolutely amazing. A and delight. You should yep. definitely watch it. Uh, listen to this episode first and then go watch that. Watch Spy Family with the subtitles on while listening to this episode. I promise you the voices sync up. <laughs> as hilarious as that is, don't do not do that. <laughs> Peanuts. <laughs> no, honestly, the um the voice acting, the Japanese voice acting, it really adds a lot to it. It's really, really okay, good. Okay, come on. We got a, we got a show to do. We can't just spend another episode gushing over Spy Family as much as I want to do that, too. No, we totally can do that. <laughs> so this is our sixth episode, and we release once a month. So this makes this our six-month anniversary of this podcast. Wow. Yeah. And because of that, I wanted to do something special. And to just to give you a quick background, when we started this podcast, I had this idea that our recommendations section that we do at the end of every podcast uh, as the last segment was going to have multiple series in it that we were going to talk about. However, it didn't work out that way because apparently we like to just talk about things and we never got around to doing multiple <laughs> multiple series in one segment. So for our six month uh, anniversary for our episode six, it's a big milestone. We decided we're going to do review stravaganza. Review stravaganza. So what we're going to do is each of us has uh, a series that we want to recommend to the other two. So we're going to go over that. It's like show and tell. And then... We'll do some Isekai recommendations next. And then we have one for the actual recommendation section, which we've all been reading. So stick around. It's just all recommendations all the time. This whole episode. So I hope you enjoy recommendations. It's good stuff. I mean, why else would we recommend it? Indeed. So to kick things off, I will be recommending today a little series called Tricks Dedicated to Witches. I know nothing about this. Never heard of well, this, but I am intrigued by the name. That's the point. It's not a long isekai <laughs> name, so I'll, I'm very intrigued that Brad is sharing it you today. You just assume it's an isekai. <laughs> yes, you're correct. <laughs> so, because I'll be recommending three isekais later, I wanted to pick for my first one, not an isekai. However, this series is actually only technically not an isekai. <laughs> okay. The premise of Tricks de Dedicated to Witches is that there is a 
very famous magician in modern day Japan called Makoto. And he is retiring. And for his last trick in his last show, he wants to have a huge finale, right? And in this finale, this big trick, he dies. Okay. And gets sent back. Oh, in like time. he actually dies. Well, they don't really answer that. Okay. <laughs> so he probably dies, but he also might just have been transported. The point is, it's not an actual isekai because he's time traveling and not being reincarnated in another world, in a different dimension. Is he reincarnated? No. So he appears in medieval Europe in the clothes that he was in. Okay. Fully, like, basically transported. Uh, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court kind there of situation. Go. Yeah, pretty much. Shaking it to the original. So the thing that makes tricks dedicated to witches really great is they always softball in the fact that oaths oh, things might be magic but then because makoto was a modern day magician it always comes through that well it's not actually magic it's a trick and here's how the trick was done there's always very plausible explanations for how all of these things occur Ooh, okay the I'm... medieval people react well to that <laughs> well so that's the key is the reason that he's doing this is because the first thing he sees when he gets transported back is they're burning a witch at the stake and he knows that magic isn't real and so he decides he needs to save this girl right which he does and she's the first witch that he starts working with in order to save other witches because the church is going around accusing exceptional women of being witches are they actually witches or so can they just do math <laughs> <laughs> there there's no magic probably so far so well, what we know there's a there's a young girl later on that talks to animals and that's really suspect and i'm sort of on the fence because they don't outright say that it's magic and they sort of allude to the fact that animals are smart and can understand people but then she can understand them that one is a little out there but i'll give them that because all of the rest of them they're very clear there's the the first the first girl doesn't really have any specialties but like all of the subsequent girls have all these specialties like they pick up one who's a, an engineer um they pick up one who's just like really strong and, and fit and she can like sword fight and everything this sounds cool yeah it's honestly it's super awesome and i really really need everybody to go out and read it because it was canceled no oh. there's only like 31 chapters oh and the reason was that the mangaka thought that he couldn't handle it Handle so the success like it was or? too powerful that he couldn't like he couldn't do through. a good enough job, which Aww. is ridiculous because yeah. it's excellent the entire time. So I want everybody to go out and find it and read it and tell other people about it and become super popular so that he picks it back up. Give him your energy because it's so good. <laughs> now, they did sort of wrap it up with like a final confrontation with one of the priests. Oh, and the. The priests also do magic, finger quotes, um, which is also tricks. And ah, a Christian magician. They do much yeah. the same in real life. And so they're sort of like, they don't meet the head priest at the very end, but there's sort of a, a final confrontation that they do. It's really tense and everything. So it's moderately finished up. So I, I But there's so much more to do. So you are selling me on it and this, this might be a pedantic point, but I'm just wondering if it ever comes up that this is a, in medieval Europe, a guy from the far East walking around with like just a ton of women who were accused of being witches. Yeah. They definitely gloss over that. Okay. So it is not um, just a hundred percent confirmed. Cause it doesn't sound like it from anything else besides just, he's gathering particular well, women that this is not a harem. It's definitely not a harem. Cool. Good. Um, Appreciate it. Which is, they do a really good job of that. At one point, um, he cross dresses and he's like the hottest one. So, okay. This sounds fun. Yeah, okay. This sounds very much up my alley. It's, it's got magic. It's got cool ladies. I should, I should note, uh, based on what Ben was asking, he doesn't really walk around that much because 
he puts on this persona that he's the devil. Oh, that's so, fun. So he's the devil and he is with these witches. They don't try and tell people that they're not doing magic. They very much lean into, hey, this is real magic and everything. I actually like that idea more because I, I was wondering, like, how would he get around? I mean, he, he'd be the talk of the town anywhere he went. Yes. But I like that, that he's, uh, you know, I, I like playing the villain to protect yourself or, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I like that. For that kind of bravado of it to make the story, to make not just literally the story we're reading, but the story of him in yeah. that area of what it is, the tale. So I can definitely recommend this to literally anyone because the story is very accessible. There's not the isekai trope of, oh, this is a Japanese person. So we have the Japanese knowledge. He's literally just a modern day person. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of like, oh, in Japan, there's this hierarchy. So this happens and he feels this way. No, it's very much just like he's a modern day magician. The art is excellent. I oh. mean, it's, it's not hyper stylized, but it's also not generic manga art. That's exciting. Yeah, it's it's just good top to bottom. And I can't recommend it enough. Brad, I'm kind of upset we have to record so much more podcasts because I really want to read it now. <laughs> this is like, this is ticking a lot of my boxes. Yeah, I mean, it seems you're not asking for much of a commitment with 30 chapters. Yeah, so, I'm no, almost even sad of how short it is. The chapters are fairly long. Okay, that's um, good. I want to say 40, 50 pages each. Oh, okay. But... I actually don't remember for certain, but I, that's what I think. How often was he putting out 50 page chapters? Well, I, I want to say that this was, it started in like 2017. When did it wrap? Um, like a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. Okay. okay. So it's been dormant for a little bit. Yeah. The one major problem, and this is also a problem with the other three that I'm going to recommend later in the Isekai segment, which is. There's no official translation. I was going to ask that. That was going to be my yeah. next question. Yeah, where you where you find this and at so, 31 chapters, unfortunately, it didn't seem like it'd be collected officially in America anywhere. I can't actually recommend any place for you to go and find this. I'm sure that Wink. if there was some kind of manga Wink. index that you'd be able to find it there. Yeah, if you could like portmanteau that the way they did like a Pokedex, like a Pokemon index. Yeah. There might be some sort of yeah. manga version of that. That's that's that would be org. where I would, you know, <laughs> that's if I was going to search for it, I would probably look in a place like that. Um, but unfortunately, there's no legal, fully legal way to go and find it. However, morally, you are completely justified because there is no official <laughs> index trans uh, English translation. I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess. I want everybody to support this author. Yes. If an, an official translation comes out, definitely buy it. I want this guy to finish this story so badly. <laughs> do manga authors ever do Patreon? Like, especially these indie like web a coffee guys. Or yeah. coffee, however you say yeah, that. Buy me a coffee or something. That would be. I would buy I, me a coffee. I would give that guy <laughs> yeah. money. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely go, go find it. Rate it wherever you read. You know, find a place to leave comments, whatever. At, at mention the guy on Twitter, tell him to please start it back up. Like, it's so good. There's a bizarre group of Americans <laughs> who really <laughs> need this. Hey, uh, there's the, the, I mean, it's not the same level, but I remember a podcast I used to listen to a bunch of Canadians, I think being a part of why Yakuza got big in America after a while, mm -hmm. just because they were so hype about it. And it just sort of spread out from there. You never yeah. know. If we if if this manga comes back, we're gonna say it got it got reincarnated <laughs> in the Ooh. same world. That is true. By us in the By same us. world, and also the author doing most of the heavy lifting. So before I leave this one off, I want to talk real quickly about the the technical details of one of the tricks because Ooh, yes. okay, late on me the the real meat and potatoes of this is because he spends pages and pages on the trick itself. Yes. So let's see. Pen and which, Teller me which up. Which would be a good one. I th probably the first one he does is, is pretty good because 
the way that he frees this this woman from being burned at the stake is that he sets up a pulley system with you know a, a wire to literally like abduct her off of the the burning post they set it on fire but he set it up so that the fire just appears to everyone to be burning her and then he like appears and he's like i'm the devil and i'm taking my witch back and she flies up to him <laughs> and it's all explained in pretty detailed art and descriptions of the way the wires are connected and how people wouldn't be able to see it because it's bright daylight out and the way that the the logs are set up so that it'll appear that she's on fire even though she's perfectly safe it's so technically proficient brad you're describing catnip for my brain <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna say there's no puzzle battles but honestly there are I love learning th like because the, I love learning they, things. There are parts where they go directly up against the priests and the priests have their technical thing that they they're doing. They have to out charlatan each no, other. No, that's exactly it. The, <laughs> yes. the one priest makes uh knives float in the air and like fly at people and they he's like <laughs> What are the stakes? Are they trying to win the crowd? Like <laughs> Well, basically, yeah. Hey, this is a battle for people's souls, my dude. Now, the witches and and Makoto are always trying to like escape, but they also want to put on the show of like, Hey, the devil is real so that later on they can use that as like to get out of situations. I don't think that would work out quite the way he thinks it would work. Out. Wow. <laughs> so the, the priest one is really cool because he only ever uses these knives inside places. And it, you, you find out that he's actually using electromagnets. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And you would go electromagnets in medieval Europe. How? But they explain it. They go through all of the technical details. It's really just the walls are built with lodestones. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe it, it is. Don't in the spoil walls. too much. <laughs> yeah. So definitely go check that out. Uh, as I said, you can just look it up online. Tricks to, dedicated to witches and probably find it pretty easily. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing, Brad. That was a really yeah. good show and tell. I'm very, very intrigued to read that now. Now, the question is, should I rate this out of five stars on the Words About Books scale? The Words About Books scale is getting redone. Oh, already? Oh, already, yes. That was fast. Yeah. Well, I got some feedback that was basically... That's not how a rubric works. <laughs> and I started DMing with the guy who was an educator and he was talking to me and he made some good points and gave me some suggestions. So I'm redoing that. Oh, well, well, there you go. Are you going to release another hour and a half long episode where you re-rate everything? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I won't rate it on a 10 half star scale then. There you go. Um, but I will say for me, five out of five dang okay oh well i'll have to read it and check in then next time maybe so now who would like to go next i can go okay so i have uh not as obscure a choice in fact a lot of listeners have probably already seen the anime adaptation i'm bringing you a seinen horror body horror uh manga parasite by hitoshi iwaki seinen is uh like more adult than shonen okay okay um oh, usually okay. very violent gory um berserk mm. is seinen um so this the line for those is always murky to me because <laughs> like, Jojo feels like it should be a saying. Right, I would think like a Jujutsu Kaisen, right? But they they lumped that under Shonen. Yeah, huh? and we I, lumped it under Shonen. I I I definitely can tell you I have no idea what the Japanese content standards are. <laughs> Good point. That's, that's been a mystery I could not penetrate with all my study. So. Parasite, uh, it was a manga f that started, it ran from uh, 1988 to 1995. It got a recent anime adaptation in 2018. Oh, wow. They modernized it. It's it's set in present times, so everybody has cell phones and different haircuts. But that's pretty much the only thing they changed. The anime is 
good. But I really think the manga is is a must read if you're into that more adult, that grittier kind of manga that I'm always talking about missing. <laughs> so the plot of Parasite, and I should mention this is spelled P-A-R-A-S-Y-T-E, so that you don't get it confused with the Korean movie that won all those awards. It is one day there's like a meteor or something and a bunch of spores rain down on Earth. And these spores are parasites. And if they come into contact with a human, they take over its body. They totally wipe out the personality. and So body snatchers kind of thing? Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. But they don't necessarily get all the person's memories. They, they get screwed up a little bit. And the parasites themselves have this strange personality of they don't know what they are, but they're hyper intelligent and they're almost robotic in their analysis of things. Mm. So you can know somebody's got a parasite. Well, they're good enough at hiding themselves, but they're they do eventually figure out that these things are a factor. Is this a thing where the parasite is using the memories to try and continue to be that person to stay hidden? I don't think many of them successfully do that because the other thing is they have to eat people. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's how they stay alive. So the kind of important the human who is uh, taken over is eating other humans. Yes. Okay. So and they cannibalism have, kind of thing. Yeah, and they have the ability to change their body any which way they want. They can they can turn their knives and they can turn their hands into like tentacle knives. And they can turn their knives into spoons. They can turn their knives into spoons. <laughs> forks into forks into chopsticks. It's it's madness. But yeah, they can transform any which way. The battles are very like dynamic. Oh, mm. battles. Okay. Yes. Then. So there's battles. So the main character. Is there like a Akira thing going on? Well, the main character is a guy named Shinichi. One of the parasites gets to him and he it goes into his arm and he wakes up and he's able to tourniquet his arm before it can reach his brain. When they enter the body, they have so much time to take root or they die. Oh, that's where I've seen this. I, and yeah, the anime. Yeah. yeah. And so when he manages to keep it inside his arm for a long period of time, it has to take root only in his arm. And so his parasite winds up being kind of a symbiotic creature. Ooh, how very venom of you. So it has its own personality and it controls his right arm. What was that? That time my girlfriend got Put in my arm. No, we were talking hand. about this. It's uh <laughs> no, there is a there is a manga about that we were talking yeah. about last week, but it is not an isekai, and it's literally just a <laughs> a teenage boy at one point. I remember the context gets his hand replaced, his right hand replaced by the girl he has a crush on. It could well be a parody of this because this uh <laughs> this parasite, it initially the parasite is kind of the mature one, and they weirdly mm. do this like Macbeth thing where unexpected um you know like if you if you're familiar with macbeth like lady macbeth and lord macbeth uh kind of like switch emotional places by the end of the story like he starts off very insecure and not wanting to hurt anybody and she's very like ambitious and murderous and then they flip the only thing i know about macbeth is that denzel washington kicked that guy's ass that is a different Macbeth, okay. I think, than the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. But uh, in this one, the the parasite kind of grows more human and the human kind of grows more distant. It's, they do, it, it, it's very emotionally intelligent hmm. for a big, gory body horror fest. Hmm. Okay. And they explore kind of themes of like what it means to be human, um, meeting an alien intelligence, learning to cooperate with it, or... Um, destroy it. There are a lot of family dynamics that aren't usually explored in manga from that era, especially he has, he has a very clearly defined relationship with his mother and his father. Hmm. It's, it's that old school eighties anime style. His, his father's actually in it. That's a his big, father's in it. And it's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it explores the whole thing. Um, he's a high school student. He winds up being hunted by other parasites and his parasite does not need to consume hum human flesh because it is in symbiosis with his body. He's able to draw nourishment from the food Shinichi eats. Hmm. 
Okay. And I wonder why the other parasites can't do that. Is it that, probably they're in the, the brain where they have access to the stomach and the mouth? This becomes a thing where the parasites don't understand what they are. Mm. And some of them are looking for ways to just, they're all looking for ways to survive. They're very like solo predators. It's they're like not a hive vampires mind. Vampires that don't bite humans. Well, they, they really just have one basic motivation, survive. And from that, don't we all? that's kind of the only emotion they have. Mm. That's the only maybe like irrational thing. That's the cause from which all their effects derive. Everything after that is just pure robotic logic. And so it, it's, it's a really interesting series. Uh, like the interactions between the parasites and Shinichi, Shinichi's development as a character, the relationships um, are very real and that adds very real consequences to the story. And like I said, I think the anime, if you don't want to read a manga, if you can't get a hold of the manga, I, the anime is good. It, it's, it's fine. It hits all the, it hits all the moments, but I think I'm really passionate about that old school manga style and and this has that it's mm -hmm. the perfect combination of that and i think just just like the old 80s hair the old like sailor <laughs> fuku outfits um it, it's great so if 80s nostalgia is a problem for you you should watch the anime <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like now it's been long enough that you know going back to the 80s is what 40 years ago now so mm -hmm. It's an interesting thing to go back to. The interesting thing is the anime, um, it it updated the biggest thing that bothered me about the anime was um, he has kind of a girlfriend character and her hair is completely different. They, that's the only thing they completely changed. Everybody else looks almost exactly the same, but she had this just- Change this girlfriend's hair. I can't stand it. In the manga, she has this unsalvageable 80s hair oh, yeah. that you just- it just would look so weird in a modern setting. And I think also in the, uh, in the updated anime, he tourniquets himself with like a headphone cord mm. in, <laughs> instead of, <laughs> I forget what he uses in the, uh, in the manga. Well, he's obvious has this rubber strap for taking heroin, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's a really good, uh, little, and, and though I say body horror, you know, it's not, I don't think it's too much. I don't know if I'd, recommend it to like little children but or the squeamish yeah. i think if you're if you faint at the sight of blood no but if it, you survive jojo it's not saw i'll put it that mm, way okay. it's not it's not junji ito not gratuitous no it's there's there's a lot of blood limbs get cut off but it's not like guts and gore and bent broken limbs and stuff it's like not that. berserk mm -hmm. yeah okay it doesn't like revel in it okay this sounds um this sounds really neat. Some of my affection for this is also the fact that you brought this physically and I'm very excited to dig into it. <laughs> um, I'm forcing people to Because I don't think I've read, I think like the oldest manga I've ever read has probably been like Dragon Ball or like Dr. Slump, I guess. But like, this manga in the 80s sounds pretty cool. This manga is so old that there are letters to the mangaka published in the graphic novels. Nice. People actually write him letters and they say, like, I'm so and so. And the people writing are like in their 30s. They're businessmen. <laughs> oh, wow. And they're talking about how much how much they look forward to this. So you can find this as an anime wherever you watch anime. Yeah, wherever anime is wherever. now. And you can buy physical copies I believe, of the official translation. I believe it's still in print. There is an official translation. I don't know. I bought my copies a long time ago. Is this from Jump or is this from somebody else? No, this is... Um, Jump doesn't specialize in the sane and stuff. This was no. originally published in uh, Morning Open Zocon and then made it to Monthly Afternoon. Oh. It's currently published in America by Kodansha. I don't. That's a new one. I don't know that one. That was mostly what I wanted to know is who was publishing it here. So Kodansha Comics is owned uh, in Japan, I believe, by a collection of manga authors and industry people. I think the most prominent one is the lady who does Sailor Moon. Oh. Owns a big stake in Kodansha Comics. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But they took back a bunch of their properties from Del Rey. Mm -hmm. um, and I forget which other one. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. the Moonlight Densetsu. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many volumes is it? Eight. Eight? Only eight? Yeah. Mm, okay. That's a, that's a, I, I like 
want very I, I like it when there's not an excessive amount. It's it feels approachable then. There's a very clear arc. It's we were not just going just to go. Yeah. We were just talking about how many volumes there were of Dragon Ball, and you said like thirty. So I was like, "Well, that's just 30. ridiculous." Please. One Piece, I think, is almost. Is it a hundred? That's also ridiculous. It's very strange. Yeah, One Piece is very unassailable. I'm reading Tokyo Ghoul right now, and it's like seven volumes. And it's like this is the right amount. <laughs> you know, it, it's when you when you find out that there are. I don't know, a hundred volumes of like Garfield comics. That doesn't, <laughs> that, that sounds that's, right because it runs every day. Yeah, where I'm different. going with this is like length of a story. Once it gets so long, it's, it's going to start impacting the quality of the story. Yeah. It's less at that point. It's less about the story and more about just the setting and the characters and right. all that. Is and that, I feel like we're going off the rails yeah. for what this episode's about. So future episode, topic. future episode, manga yeah. length. All right. Well, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. That was um, I'm interested to look at that one as well. The show and tell's going really good. I hope I hope I, I hope I bring my A game. Well, <laughs> let's see your A game. Oh, please don't say it like that, Brad. <laughs> I, <was> really, <laughs> I can't see you right now to I just see that your A game. Um, Andrew, <sighs> what what are you going to recommend to us? I'm going to recommend. I'm going to recommend <laughs> uh, both the manga and the anime to an extent, but more of the manga because that's a lot further along. Of Golden Kamui, which is a fairly recent, still running series, um, set in I believe it's pre World War One, um, Japan post the Japanese Russian War, which I will get into a little history report then later about that because I loved learning about that war. Literally learned about that war from the story. So uh, there is a soldier who is who is back. The war is over. He is the immortal Sugimoto. That's the one name you're going to get because it's the one that I can remember. <laughs> um, and he gets rolled up into some stuff up in Hokkaido where there's still a bunch of like native tribes people like japan proper is pretty modernized at this point obviously if we like we just had a big war and we're on the eaves of world war one but there's still a lot of like very akin to you know the native americans of america um and he gets rolled up with uh, a, a girl who's living in one of them i'm, I'm a little fuzzier because it's been running a long time about the exact opening but basically learns that there is a uh, a stash of gold hidden by a criminal uh, that may or may not be related to this tribe and that he made while he was in prison. So he, uh, no one could find the gold. He tattooed the map on all of the prisoners that were with him. And then one day they were moving all the prisoners and the prisoners escaped. So the manga is about them trying to track all these guys down and create the map and kind of put it together. Um, while that is also happening, there is also a um there are many other factions going for it one of them is a military contingent of um head up by like a kind of crazy lieutenant guy who's like i want this gold so i can keep the war going so the place where all my buddies died gets to like stay important mm. so he's kind of another villain and then there's an you know another like there's a bunch of factions all kind of vying for this and what makes golden camo i think really neat uh at least one of the reasons is that i don't I don't see a lot of manga or anime set in this time period, um, but I find it very like fascinating. I feel like so much time you spend either in modern times or like in samurai time, like Demon Slayer is just starting to approach like more modernization where you have like electricity mm -hmm. and the monorail is here. Not the monorail, but you know what I mean? Train. Train. <laughs> um, the king of this forest. This is... Or but here it's monitor. you know it's the 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 world like they're already modernized like guns are around so that's kind of cool the second thing which is one of my as I stated many times one of my favorite things is you get to learn a lot so anytime they are they go hunting a lot for different food or just things in nature and the girl that is with Sugimoto, like you just get a, she goes, oh, we, we hunt fish here. This particular type of fish here is, you know, this is, they get here in this season. We use that when then we do a special thing and we eat their like brains or something. And then you make a special <laughs> noise when you eat something that's delicious. But like you get all these little bits of like, oh, we make these things. Or like, oh, when my tribe's women get married, they get this specific tattoo around their mouth. And like all of it seems very like researched and real. And it's, I, I'm a sucker for that. And then the final piece of this puzzle, which I think is maybe actually my favorite piece, is if you're into true crime stuff, uh, 
Mm. Golden Kamui is unexpectedly a really good source for that because they're all escaped prisoners. So sometimes it's like, oh, here's the uh, uh, shoot. Uh, the what's the name of the guy who had like the H.H. Uh, H. Holmes, the guy who had the killer the hotel. hotel. Yeah. yeah. Um, a guy that's kind of like that shows up or he's just in a hotel. Uh, I think he is also I shouldn't say he I believe she is also trans and is like that becomes a reoccurring character. There's like there is a couple serial killers that pop up every now and then. Uh, there is a guy who is a taxidermist uh, that the say, military pretty... finds to start making fake skins. And he is just like the military guy finds he is the back area where he's like made taxidermy of a bunch of people. And then makes friends with them and all this taxidermist can do. It's like, look at all these amazing outfits that I've made from human flesh that I've dug up from, like, the cemetery. Ed Dogeen. Yeah, very Ed Vest. See my yeah, vest. vest. Oh, it's more than a vest, my friend. Um, and it is also, like, on top of all this, it's also, like, genuinely really funny. Um, I believe we've talked about a lot of manga and anime that have great reaction faces. And I... I genuinely believe Golden Kamui has the funniest reaction faces. <laughs> um, I know that's your favorite thing. They're one of my favorite things and just they get super detailed, like they enter a different art style and I've never seen anything else like them. And they always make me laugh because they don't they pop up sometimes unexpectedly and all of the characters do them. And it just it makes me so happy. <laughs> So, like, I just think the the setting's cool, like, the time period's cool, you get to learn stuff, there's a lot of, like, you're you're constantly, like, you have your main crew, and, like, there's all the intrigue of the story, and them trying to find the gold, and figure out what's going on with that, but, like, you keep getting introduced to new kind of weird characters, and sometimes they deal with it quickly, and sometimes they deal with them later, and, like, you'll always find something that feels within the realm of possibility, but is also, like, neat. Like, I remember there's, like, one guy when they're out in the mountains is blind from working in the mines and is an assassin with a gun who has these crazy cup things over his ears and hunts at night via sound. Nice. They're like a bandit gang of people who worked at the mine before it shut down and they were just like, yeah, you guys are messed up, whatever, you're on your own. And like, that's such a cool, like, again, we get uh, we get to buy other things like puzzle fights sometimes where you get to like, well, how do we deal with this situation? And it's not as shonen-y as, as, as all of those, but you you because you're running into a lot of interesting characters, what's going on can change a lot. Where sometimes it's like, like in that one where it's like, hey, we're out in the woods trying to find this guy or find somebody else. Or like, there's one I remember a lot later on where it's like, oh, this guy is a a Russian like boxer guy, this like special type of like Russian bare knuckle boxing that happens in this like way out in the boonies like town. So it's like all of them have to get all like muscled up and go fight in this like specific man fight pit to try to get either, you know, a drawing of his skin or actually take him out then. And <laughs> just, it's, it's a colorful cast. It, it, there's, it's got like of intrigue. It's got a lot of humor. You get to learn a lot of stuff. Like, I'm bummed it's not done, uh, at least uh, officially. I read it through the Shonen Jumps website. Mm -hmm. um, they randomly, I don't know if it's like monthly or something, but like every so often you just get a batch of 10 chapters all at once. I oh, believe the that's interesting. Japanese manga is pretty far past. Hmm. I mean, like I want to say 50 plus chapters past what's out officially in America with the official translation. Um, but there's still like, I want to say at least over a hundred chapters if not even more than that but okay. um i i love it i really i'm really confused why there is not more story set in this time period japan because they are like <laughs> are you <laughs> because it's um the there's a couple of things like the ainu people the treatment yes that is one of the tribes yes yeah the, the treatment of the ainu people is not something that japan um dealt with very well. It, it was a literal genocide. That doesn't surprise me. I guess it's the time period. So, okay. So maybe you can, I'm going to give my little history lesson and maybe you know things that can fill in my gap and we can treat some of my corner as this. So I never really knew about the Japanese Russian war or Japanese Russo war or whatever. And, and it's basically Japan's like, well, everybody else is doing this colonization thing. We want to be a big player on the stage. Let's go like super take Korea and the area around it. And then they're like, oh, we'll just bloody Russia. They're, they barely have a presence here. Nobody else likes them in the area. We'll go try to take their land, these major spots. You know, like a prestige war was kind of a big thing then. And for the most part, 
Japan, despite being a lot smaller than Russia and their army being a lot smaller, just completely trounces the Russians. Like the Russians, their their soldiers are not well supplied, like of... supplied or trained. The supply lines aren't there, like, and just wallops them. And it's weird that Japan, who's usually very proud of their like military heritage, like I don't hear more about it. I guess. Yeah. I wonder if there would be any kind of modern day equivalent to that. <laughs> well, I think a big part of it was the the Russo Japanese War was. The first, it's hard to underestimate the racism factor of, of the effect it had on Western culture. It's the first time that uh, a major white power had lost to a non-white power in a very long time. And when Japan beat Russia, that was like, oh shit, Japan's here. And that was kind of the start, though, of, like you said, Imperial Japan which is you notice there's a lot of like anime where Nazis feature pretty heavily, <laughs> True. but there's not a lot of Imperial Japanese anime. So all, so they're still, they still feel kind of weird about that. They still haven't acknowledged some of the war crimes. Yeah. I know about that part, but I, I, I guess I was under the uh, uh, understanding that a lot of that was world war two specific. And I guess it's just that entire, <laughs> entire, imperial that government time period that that style of japanese imperial government started around the time of the russo japanese war and continued on until the defeat of world war ii i don't that doesn't surprise me super deep down this yeah, yeah we don't need yeah. to go any further but sorry i just i find that war I will, fascinating i will point out that the modern day japan that weebs know and love is strikingly different from from that era well and i think it's it's like you said it's a big selling point for golden kamui that it it deals with some of that in a way that other manga have probably specifically shied away from doing you notice that like yeah there is a, there is a suspicious thing where they go right up to the meiji restoration skip a few skip a few right after world war ii <laughs> yeah pretty much actually that, that is a really good point like 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 genuinely we're having this conversation because i started reading golden kamui and i'm like oh they 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 were in this war everybody sugimoto and a lot of the major players are all so like veterans from this war and talk about kind of the hell that war is and it got me to read up on the Russo-Japanese War, and I found it very fascinating because it was something that I had never really heard about. And like you said, that's kind of a blank point in... And I think a lot of people don't even understand there's there's different ethnicities in Japan. Yeah, like, that was the thing with like all learning about the Ainu and all those different tribes was like, I didn't know this was going on, you know, up in Hokkaido. And I, that was, again, like, I've genuinely on top of all the, like, true crime, intrigue, comedy, like, I've genuinely learned a lot about a period in, of Japan and the peoples of Japan that I've never learned anywhere else, <laughs> in anything else, that I've seen even in, a, a bit of anywhere else. And I think that's, I think that is maybe not one of these selling points, but I think it is among the selling points for Golden Kamui. Mm. Um and, you know, like I said, the, the manga is out there. It's not done yet. It's extra not done in English, but is, I believe, still being written. But I believe it's nearing its end from what I've read. It's kind of hard to tell from Wikipedia. Did it ever get an anime? It did. That's actually what I was getting to next. So there are three seasons of the anime. Uh, did did I, it ever get an anime? <laughs> I couldn't remember. I've only ever seen pictures of the manga, I think. Yeah. Uh, I've personally watched, kind of watched the dub. Because um, it was like I was catching back up on Golden Kamui and wanted to, like, double catch up on what had come before because it had been a couple of months um dubs fine um dubs a good time if you want to watch it subs are probably good too um it seemed it's not the most amazing anime but it is very it is a very uh you know it's one that works it's it's not like a oh my gosh this is now firing on all cylinders it's like golden comedy was already great here it is in motion uh at least in the dub the voice actors are doing a good job it's funny it moves along it gives you the intrigue it does all the bits so I would awesome. say either way is good to do it, but I have a feeling it's, I don't know if it's going to get any more seasons. So if you want the full mm. story and there's still a lot more story from where the anime ends, you'll probably want to be reading it, but mm. um, you could probably jump from one to the other, but yeah, no big, big recommends to golden Kamui. I'm very excited now to go back to my bookmark and see if another uh, care package of 10 chapters have, have <laughs> dropped since the last time I read it. Yeah. Uh, you've definitely brought that up before. So nice to uh, flesh it out a little bit and, uh, Hopefully 
people will check that out. Yeah. yeah Hopefully good. you two humans will maybe read it. That's been nice. on my list. I actually read the first couple chapters and I will have to bump it further up my list. Yeah, Ben, <laughs> I, I think I think you'd like it, especially after this little history conversation we had and how much that is I'm a I mean, blind spot for I know you don't want to stuff. dive into the history, but this is just real quick. Like I got into the the Japanese imperialism with karate because the Okinawan people were invaded by mainland Japan and they mm-hmm. weren't allowed to have weapons. And that's where you get a lot of the uh, martial arts, like the staff, the scythes, the, they're all farm tools. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Did that do them a lot of good? Uh, I mean. Better than nothing. <laughs> Okinawa. Well, it's not an isekai, so I'm not going to read it. <laughs> it's another world. It's another world. It's a world you don't know. It's another world yeah. to you. But yeah, go check that out and go check out Parasite and go check out Tricks de- Dedicated to Witches. I will very much do that. I will very much check out all three of those things. <laughs> You know what the really great thing about isekai is? There's always more of it. <laughs> well, that is in fact the great thing about isekai. Because, <laughs> I got it right? <laughs> because wow. for every terrible isekai that there is, and there is a lot of terrible isekai, there are also very many gems out there. And today, I got three of them for you. Wow. Oh my. What a rush. So the first one I want to talk about is called... The Red Ranger becomes an adventurer in another world. Ooh. Oh. It sounds like Common Rider. Sounds like Super Sentai. Yeah. It is, in fact, definitely Super Sentai. <gasps> so. The Red Ranger is always the leader. Ooh. There's, it's, it's a very clear parody of Super Sentai, Power Ranger kind of thing going on. It's a super freaking parody, the, Rangers. The group of Rangers is led by the doctor you know there's always the 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 zordon yeah, yeah the figure and bring me teens they have a um aesthetic of bandages they, what? they use bandages <laughs> for for all these different things oh, I, interesting it, it's oh. honestly not very important to the story but okay. aesthetically <laughs> it's very it's an interesting choice yeah so, so, I so they're like super out. sentai mummies I mean, they're not covered in bandages. We are the it's a it's a theme that they <laughs> use. Okay. Although the doctor does have a giant bandage over his eyes for oh, some reason. I uh, wonder where I've seen an authority figure with that before. Is this Zomburger? What? Is it Gojo? No, sorry. Continue. This is not a band. No, literally a band aid, like a adhesive bandage. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, not like a rag. Oh, or like, a head like a bandage that you would like tourniquet your arm with. No, literally a band aid. Okay. Yeah. And is, he's just got a big giant one over his eyes. Okay. But they they use these bandages for like transformation and stuff like that. Interesting. And okay. the theme that the group has is bonds. So the bonds of friendship, the bonds of family, and everything. So the Red Ranger sacrifices himself in the battle with the big bad guy. And as he dies, he gets transported to another world Mm -hmm. from the modern world where they use all the technology for all of these transformations and everything, you know, air quotes, technology um, Mm -hmm. to a world that has actual magic. And in this world, he just, he still has access to his powers as the red ranger including the giant robot that he can summon. (laughs) Oh, I feel like I thought you'd need the whole crew to do that. I thought he'd just get like a foot or something. Well, so that's the thing is all of his powers work off of the power of bonds. So he needs to make some friends. So he has to make friends. He can't use the giant Zord unless he's got other people with him that can help power it with the power of bonds. And... It's like we can just say the power of friendship. friendship. Let's be real. <laughs> Except I was gonna say this would be way. My little pony would have been way cooler if it was like <laughs> if you knew from the gate that she had to make friends because it would power a giant mech. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's 
friendship is definitely the main one that they go with, but romantic bonds and familial bonds are also part of it. I do, I do like I, Ben is scoffing at this, but I do genuinely appreciate that. It's like, because it is not just friendship, but bonds that all of those can be meaningful. I was going to say, I'm also powered by healthy relationships. (laughs) Unironically. I mean, we are humans. (laughs) So it's just a weird thing to have to put into like words like that. Like powered bonds. by bonds. Yeah. Yeah. Bail well, bonds. Uh, yeah. Bail bonds. So he's in this other world and there's a kingdom and there's the demon Lord and all that kind of, well, the demon Lord's going to be resurrected. It's there's the, the demon Lord's yeah. kids are trying to resurrect him. And so you. there's the, the same con- old, same old. yeah, there's the general conflict thing, but it's spiced up with this both comedy and very endearing story of the red ranger. They also add in the spice of he's not the first one that got reincarnated in this world. Ooh. Now, they're really just getting into that in the version that I'm reading. So I'm not going to so spoil the, a whole lot. But me- me- mechanically, the people he forms bonds with, do they power it like like Goku's spirit bomb or do they also become rangers? No, they don't become rangers, although there are other people in this world that can transform into ranger so things. the megazord is, is possible in the future what do you mean like you know he only has his robot but as far as i know his he only he's the only one with a, with a giant robot but yes they're they've left the possibility open that there'll be uh, more so. giant robots okay exciting yeah i feel like I, I don't know why i need that oh in the <laughs> in the last chapter that i read uh he was up against you know, two of the demon Lord's kids who are super powerful and he was getting the, the crap beat out of him and he had to use the power that he was never supposed to use and transformed into the black ranger. Oh, oh man. And it, and, it, and it, and the black ranger suit works off the, the power of the, his bad feelings. Yes. Yes. I'm such a sucker for this. <laughs> I'm such a tiny child. So, I love this. this is, yeah. This is, this is a uh, Rita giving Tommy the green coin. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The thing is it's, it's definitely a comedy at its heart, but it's also really endearing and it's well-structured and it's a fun time. So and sometimes comedies have the biggest hearts. Well, yeah, you, you can, can see that spending a lot. time laughing with characters does a lot to endear them to you. A comedy that that still takes its story somewhat seriously is what a lot of parody misses. Yeah, I, I think that's the big thing. Like it can't be all jokes all the time. Right. You do still have to tell a story. So you're probably going to get me with this one just because <laughs> Power Rangers came out when I was in kindergarten. I am still very angry that my parents would not buy me the green rangers flute for christmas <laughs> guess um, what does he have a flute i had the flute oh you son of a bitch i also had the giant freaking megazord wow and it had all the different parts and you would assemble them together and then you could like move it around and stuff god japan knows how to sell toys oh yeah, yeah. so it it's it's an easy read where might one partake of it as i mentioned before you know, if there was some kind of manga index, you could probably find it there. Um, there's only 15 chapters out right oh, now. Okay. Um, oh, so is it relatively new or just slow? It's, it's fairly Both. new. Uh, it's a couple years old, but oh my um, God. It's, it's still coming out. <laughs> okay. Um, it's like one a month. <laughs> it's always a question of how many official chapters are out. And how many scanlation tra- chapters yeah. have been released? Oh, so that's always the big. They're dropping yeah. like a hundred pages at a time. <laughs> so, I mean, you could you could read this one in two days. I mean, I could read it. I've in, got a in lot a day, of manga but, to read now, um, but it's you can get into it pretty quickly, and then it's still coming out. So, hmm. you won't be disappointed. Color me intrigued. I I I would really recommend it to probably not everyone but definitely anybody who enjoys like a good adventure a good comedy good super sentai good sentai well ultraman if you're, common rider yeah if you're into <laughs> super sentai power rangers at all Do they, does he definitely. strike cool poses constantly i'm in yeah. yeah he has to posing is like one of my favorite things i mean 
The, the Ginyu one force. He's, yes. He's constantly <laughs> yelling about the power of bonds. Also, so. yeah, sign me up. It's just such a, I mean, that is probably the best translation, but that is such, I imagine that sounds better in Japanese. Yeah. He just calls everybody's Nakama. I don't know. The, <laughs> the, the, the fans sub is, uh, no, the fan it, translation is not, uh, it's not literal. chock full of. There's, there's it's no not you chock. are my Nakama with a little star yeah. where it's like this is the term that's only in one it's, piece that means you're my brother, but in a really special way. It's it's not chock full of translator notes like some series are. That's probably for the best. We're gonna have a separate episode on translator notes. Oh my gosh, I got a lot of opinions about them. <laughs> Next, I want to recommend one that's a bit more serious, but still a comedy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this one's called Isekai Shikaku disqualified from otherworldliness hmm. how does one go about getting one disqualified from otherworldliness asking for a friend i thought you were going to say isekai <laughs> chicago and got very disappointed when you didn't. <laughs> so i'm like what does that mean <laughs> that time i got reincarnated, reincarnated in chicago in chicago <laughs> And the <laughs> next chapter. That time i got reincarnated <laughs> that time i got reincarnated in the same world in chicago no uh isekai chicago is a story about a writer. I think this is going to be right up Ben's alley. Okay. He is a writer, poet, kind of, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's mostly prose, but he is tired of being alive. So he, he struggles, gives up, starts a podcast, and just makes fun of other people who work harder? <laughs> Almost. Hmm. <laughs> That's Where actually. Have I heard of, you're, you're, heard of that you're, before? You're not super know. far off on here. Oh god. Basically, the only thing it's missing is the podcast part. Oh no. <laughs> so he has a girlfriend. I think it's his girlfriend, not his wife. And they decide that they're gonna kill themselves together. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> okay. Suicide pact. So, <laughs> So they go to a river and they jump in a river to kill Jeez. themselves. Jesus. Right? But before they can do that, they get hit by a truck. <laughs> <laughs> You're on my list. I'm taking you out myself. I've got to murder you so that you can still go to heaven in the eyes of the Catholic church. <laughs> so in the he eyes gets, of Isekai church. He gets summoned to another world where lots of people get summoned to other, the, this world as saviors, right? Mm-hmm. Isekai cathedral. <laughs> The East Cathedral. Yeah, actually, yes, exactly. It's a church he gets summoned into. <laughs> well, there you go. I am okay. That works. So I, when people go into this world, they get powers, right? As yeah. mm-hmm. the standard isekai trope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, when he goes into this world, as far as we can tell, he has no powers. However, he continues to try and kill himself in various ways and is <laughs> unable to die. Oh my god! But it's not as explicit as like, oh, he gets stabbed and he's fine. He's like constantly eating sleeping pills and they don't do anything. And I was just saying, I'm picturing like the, uh, the opening of Deadpool two. No, yeah. no, it's not like, that. <laughs> uh, but he's co- constantly putting himself in dangerous situations and just coming out unscathed to his chagrin. Um, <laughs> okay. He's very, did he get the luck skill? I mean, he's the immortal. No. Sugimoto. <laughs> Maybe, but probably not. Um, this is still ongoing. So, we don't have all the answers yet, but he starts traveling around with the priestess who summoned him because the other worlders are supposed to come in and they're supposed to save this world in various ways. However, basically all of the other, 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 other worlders have been corrupted. They get their special powers and they use them for their own gain. Mm. So there's, hundreds of other worlders running around with various powers, some of them very, very powerful, just running amok. So now they need other worlders to take care of the other worlders. This is kind of like we brought in the frog to eat the locust, but then the frog overpopulated. Now we got to bring in the hawks to take yep. care of the. Yeah. That doesn't work. Now, <laughs> as I said, it is a comedy. It's a dark comedy. Okay. okay. I mean, it sounds like it with him yeah. trying to kill himself. But what we find is that as he confronts these other worlders, not because he wants to, but because they're there, he basically psychologically analyzes them and picks out all of their flaws and writes their story, which unsummons them. 
<laughs> oh. He, he basically psychologically destroys these people to the point that they give up and go back to their own world to live happily. Okay. I'm curious it's, yeah. and intrigued. I, I cannot stress how brilliant it is. Okay. So he's he's literally walking around all the time trying to die and gets in these situations where the powerful other worlders are like, you know, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take this over. And then he's like, why didn't your mother love you? And they're just <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> that's, that's a gross oversimplification. But that's it's, the gist of it. Yo, mama's them and they, they go into brain shock. Well, here, Andrew, this might get you. OK, give his me, traveling that. companions drag him around in a coffin. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I will give it a shot. I'm not sure. I, I guess it all it, it does come down to the execution of pardon my pun of how uh, hmm. how he writes their stories. It's uh, it's 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 his power. So it's it's magical in nature. Well, I mean, um, it comes down to like what the stories are themselves. Yeah, are the right. stories compelling? But yeah. it's that it's that classic thing. It's the demon slayer thing where. There's a battle going on, and then you get the backstory. <laughs> oh, but there's a reason for it. <laughs> but there's a perfect reason for it. It like fits perfectly. Now, I'm very Jujutsu uh, Kaisen of you. I'm checking this. There's only 20 chapters, so, so also still time easy, to get on board. easy to get into. Um, it's it is ongoing. It started coming out in 2019. So so use yourself. If somebody recommends One Piece, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could have brought that today, Ben, but I knew that would have been a fool's errand. Uh, but. I would I I highly recommend this to anybody who likes intelligent dark comedy. It really is sort of along the the lines of I mean it's not like this but in terms of the comedic timing and sensibilities similar to a an Edgar Wright film. Whoa, <laughs> that's high marks. Okay. Yeah. Why does he want to kill himself? What That's happened to his question. girlfriend? I did not reread the first chapter for this, but why does he um, want to continue to kill him? What happened to his girlfriend? You took so much time to set up that he had a girlfriend and then she disappeared. Well, it's that's integral for the story. I'm not oh, going to okay. spoil okay. it. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. What was the name of this one again? Isekai Shikaku, which is Isekai S H I K K A K U. Oh, and I should note, I probably should have noted this at the beginning. All of this stuff will be in the description if you need specific spellings to search for stuff so she ka ku shikaku on um chicago if if there was some kind of index from manga um this is probably rated there. at 8.68 out of 10 Ooh. probably on some kind of index for manga.org yeah it'd probably be a dot org yeah. wouldn't be a dot com don't go to dot com yeah, it's not overly violent. I mean, there's, yeah. there's definitely violence to it, but probably just the fact that he's trying to kill himself constantly. I tell you, there's a surprising amount of violence to Freer in, but that's not there. The, uh, they visit the world tree, and he saves the world tree from some other worlders, and the world tree grants him a magical endless bottle of sleeping pills. <laughs> what a... What a... What? A, oh, what? Okay, okay. No no more. No, I don't want to know anymore. I'm I'm... Yggdrasil I'm... prescribes a man being okay. <laughs> oh man, yeah. No, I want to recommend it to basically everybody who you know enjoys a little bit of uh, self-deprecation, dark in, comedy. In their humor. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really good. Self decapitation. As with the rest of these, not that many chapters right now, so you can get into it pretty easily, and then read them as they come out. So next, uh, I'm going to recommend this one. I've actually talked to Andrew about this one before and he expressed interest in it, but I definitely wanted to talk about it on the podcast because it is such a unique idea. Okay. This is called Unparalleled Path, reincarnated as the AI for a space battleship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. This one's a funky one. So... Standard isekai protagonist, you know, high school kid gets killed, wakes up, turns out he's now the AI system for a battleship in space that happens to be right in the middle of a battle right now. And that's 
really all there is to it. <laughs> There's not a whole lot to talk about, but it's just such an interesting idea because as a sentient being, instead of this AI that has these strict protocols and rules that it has to follow, he's able to do all of these things that are unprecedented. He, he has creative thinking. So in these battles, uh, for instance, he's able to concentrate the shields into a cone. So when the laser fire comes in, it gets deflected and doesn't actually like break down the shield as much as if it was, you know, just the sphere or flat. Um, they, they're able to use all these different tactics that they wouldn't be able to use uh, with just a standard battleship. Also, because he's bringing in this knowledge that he has from it's weird to say because it's modern day, but he's in the future. Yeah, brings his, he brings in his advanced knowledge of cones. Yeah, <laughs> geometry, geometry shapes. <laughs> but you know, as it is, obviously he's got to use his his knowledge to help out these people. And so, you know, there's some stuff at the beginning. It's like, oh, are, do they need to purge him, or are they going to let him stay, and, and that kind of thing. <laughs> Whose fantasy is it to be <laughs> the AI on a spaceship? You could well, have been the spaceship he, commander. Well, no, but it's the it's he's literally I feel like it's just the fact that he is literally the ship. Yeah. So he he can like man the guns and use the engines. Like this sounds like some kind of hell to me. Do you want to well, drive a mech or do you want to become the yeah, mech? Honestly, it does. <laughs> It doesn't seem like fun time. No, <laughs> but he's also got access to vast amounts of information, and you know he's able to now process more because he has all these super processors and he's, everything. And he's like very happy about this. This is what he. Um, he's not really happy about it, but he is okay with it pretty quickly. He's okay with it enough. This Do seems you, like 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 you said it like it's the it's the the main hook is what a weird and interesting novel idea in this space yeah, where it's everything's just, like let's just go to a fantasy world and occasionally you're like a spider or a virus but this is like this is what I think about when I think about mm -hmm. the 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 gr the grand canvas that isekai can be like what if you were what if it was a sci-fi what if it was a western like it can be anything right it just happens to it's, always be very usually the same kind of boilerplate fantasy right. it's just so unique and it's it's a good story it's it's not you know super deep and intriguing um, there's not a whole lot of humor but the overall story of there's this war going on and the commander of this battleship is actually the princess of this empire and it turns out that her fan like her prince brothers are pulling some shady stuff and there's there's a lot going on and so it's a good time what are the odds this goes the uh that time i got reincarnated as a slime root where they do away with the slime part very quickly, and he gets a humanoid body. Wait, did they do that in slime? Yeah, basically. That seems lame. Now, this one is being scanlated very slowly. It apparently is complete already, hmm. but there's only nine chapters available. I bet this dude gets a robot body. Um, as but, uh, Did you say nine chapters? Yeah. I can read nine chapters. Nine chapters in, and they're still <laughs> flying around in space. They've been through like three battles so far, so making, not making not shapes. a whole lot going on there yet. But um, I I definitely I read I talked to Andrew about this two chapters in, and I was like, this is crazy. This is so cool. <laughs> it's the it's the novelty that my brain uh, loves. Yeah, I I like the novelty of it, but like it's it's something about it's weird to me because so much of Isekai feels like wish fulfillment. And this one actually sounds like some kind of like my personal but hell. That's the that's the great thing about Isekai is it's just a vehicle. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> What's the great thing on, about this guy world. is he's just a vehicle. He is indeed just a vehicle. <laughs> he is a vehicle, <laughs> but not just a vehicle. He's so much he's the more. vehicle for the story and himself and the people who ride atop him. <laughs> Reincarnated in the world, another world as the Death Star. Yeah. We are like one step removed from reincarnated as another world as a toaster. Reincarnated in another world as a world and you are a living planet. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to recommend this one just because, I mean, 
I think it's good. I, I think it's a good story. It's well executed. The art is good. Um, it's not anything fancy, but it's pretty cool looking. There's a bunch of space battleships flying around and shooting lasers. It's pretty Sounds awesome. Pretty cool. But it's just, it's competently executed, but it's such a interesting idea to put out there. So again, it's only nine chapters at this point that you can actually read. Um, even though if you read Japanese, you could probably buy the complete <laughs> version. Um, good luck with that. But it's just, it's a good time. And so since it's so far out there, I just wanted to put that out there as like, yeah, there's a lot of drivel. There's a lot of trash isekai, but if you listen to me, I'll find the good <laughs> ones for you. <laughs> he does the digging so you don't have to. <laughs> I've just been sitting on this pun in my head of reincarnated as, in another world as a Ford F-150. There's a little dash after reen. <laughs> You'd probably be re reincarnated as a Subaru. I don't know why Ford F-150 came here. Mostly, <laughs> mostly the pun was about reincarnated and that you can buck as a car. As a Peugeot. <laughs> no, no I'm not, that, that is the, the one I'm least excited about of the recommendations, but I would for nine chapters, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, yeah I'm, I I'm intrigued enough to know what would, the deal is. I would say give it three. I think okay. three is enough to know if you are interested in it. And it's it's not a difficult read. It doesn't take a lot of time. The, the chapters are, are normal length, 30 pages or something. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's easy, but it's interesting. So, and especially as slow as they're coming out, you know, you'll get around to it. <laughs> Radical. <laughs> That'll do it for the Isekai recommendations. Woo. So I hope everybody got something out of that that they'll enjoy. Honestly, I, I w would hope everybody would go out and try and find all of them. I recommend them because I think people will like them. I'm I'm genuinely everything everybody's talked about today. I really want to go check out. Manga book club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for our recommendation today, we're going to talk about something. We've we've all been reading this. Um, it's a fairly new manga um, that's out on Viz, which you can get a subscription for for $2 a month. I would definitely recommend that. Yeah, jumps, a... jumps $2 for literally everything they're running now and all the backlogs of everything. We, uh, that's where we read. Easiest, my, my happiest subscription. Uh, yeah. Spy Family, uh, Chainsaw Man's out there. Um, and they got a, a lot of other good series. You can read all, all the of, uh, Dragon Ball. You can read all of the JoJo my, that's out in the U.S. right now, officially. So parts one through five. My hero. Academia. Actually, I think one through six, maybe even at this point, I could be wrong. So this series that we're recommending is Akane Banashi. Oh, okay, okay. I forgot now, which one we were doing yeah, today. So I, I'm really I, excited. I realized it as you were saying it's fairly new. It's in the Shonen Jump. I was like, yeah. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make Ben describe this because he can actually say all the words properly. <laughs> okay, also correct. Maybe I can. Um, so Akane Banashi is a weird uh, kind of Shonen manga. Uh, first off, female protagonist. Cool, cool design. And Shoujo. I don't think that makes it shoujo. I think it, because it still has like the kind of like battle, but it's, it's a weird, I want to say it's almost, bat, battle is probably too yeah. strong of a word. I want to say it's almost a sports manga. It's a but, sports manga. Yeah. But it's kind of, yeah, a, yeah. but it's not a sport. It's a performing art. Yes. Which is, makes it even cooler. Yeah. So it's, it's very different in that regard. There's a Japanese uh, performance art called. It's Wats Rakugo. Rakugo. Okay. okay. I don't know where we got Rakugo. Yeah. I think it was because Rakugo cause probably the person who does it gotcha. right um so rakugo that's a white guy doing it yeah there are i've looked it up so rakugo i wouldn't recommend it <laughs> i did not know what this was but i had seen it many times in like the backgrounds of stuff it's a japanese performance art where you need to sit um in one spot you're only allowed to move so much and you're only allowed to use so many props. But and you, the props are really specific. Yeah. And you have to tell a comedic story. And there's different 
genres of these stories. And I believe the genres are called Banashi. And so that that's the title. It's a little play on words. Where, it's, it's basically oh. a one person play. Yeah. If you're familiar with like on Broadway or whatever, somebody will do a one person show. Now, obviously they like walk around, but like they're, there's one person doing all of the characters, doing different voices, facial expressions, all that kind of stuff. The difference from that being that they sit in one place. They're, like everything in Japan, there are very strict rules and hierarchies involved <laughs> yes. in how you can do it and who's allowed to perform where and who's this good, um, which I don't really care about, but it works for shonen manga. It's the shonen formula we yeah. talked about last time, but it it's, as we said, you can put it on anything. You can put it on sports. You can put it on you know, podcasts. You can put it on, and in this case, Rakugo, a, a creative storytelling art. Yeah, and it's got a fairly simple setup. Um, there is our protagonist, Akane, who her father was kind of robbed of his dream of being a Rakugoka. Mysteriously. Yeah, and we still don't have an answer to yeah, why that happened. Not that we're that far into it. And but yeah. her mission, now that she is uh, coming of age, she's, I think, a high schooler? Yes. Yeah, I believe um, she's 16 or 17. Yeah. And it was when she was like 10 that her dad was doing his performance for the promotion exam or whatever yeah. to go to the next level, which would be second from the top, I want to say. Because um, there's like four levels. Um, Again, hierarchy, levels, and, who can do uh, what. For whatever reason, like the head person at this school thing decided that no one mm -hmm. could could do it from that year and like kicked them all out. Yep. So she, she has decided to make it her mission to save her father's honor by becoming uh, a brilliant Rakugoka and make this guy who failed her father, uh, change his mind. And that's, that's, I think that's really all you need to know. Yeah, that's a pretty good summary. started. That's the, that's the basic idea, but it, it just somehow like, it sounds too straightforward to be entertaining, but like <laughs> the, the humor is there. The art is there. All of the like shonen -y sports stuff is there where it's like, Oh, I worked in a bar to g understand working for my right. audience so, better. Like I'm such a sucker for that. Um, the thing that it does really, really well is that they, they show you right off the bat that Akane is really good at this but also that she has things that she needs to work on and then shows you her working on them and being really good at it. And then the payoff of her working on that then in a performance. Right. They're, they they very much lean into the, she's sort of a genius at this, but also it isn't, you know, she can do everything immediately. She's just going to walk She's all, not all Superman. Over she's still, yeah, got, no, she's still so, got some way to grow. And that's where you need to be. You need yeah. to be, I, I'm better at this than just a regular starter, but I can also. Yeah. I have learn potential, things. but I need to work to realize it. Right. Yeah. And for me, honestly, the, the draw was Rakugo. I didn't know how it would work on the page in a manga and they managed to pull it off. I will say the one caveat i have and i noticed some reviews of this said the same thing it might not give you enough about rakugo well that is the thing and i actually the, i actually like that about it because when when i'm reading it and i think if this turned into a, an anime they'd have to do it a little differently but when you're reading it it's really difficult to actually get the feeling of rakugo that is is being performed Such a verbal thing. so for the most part they don't lean heavily into the performances they describe the story somewhat they they show you some reactions and how things are going and what and what goes that at very this manga way where it's like oh, she decided to leave out this part but that means yeah. she's gonna have to go do this yeah. part. yeah but they do it well and because they're not just telling the story the whole way through i think that's better because the point of it is the performance and not the story itself. Yes. So in a, a manga format, them actually telling the story isn't going to be as impactful as if it was audio and visual. I actually, you were joking about looking up Rakugo and there was a white guy doing it. I might've actually found that exact video and I might've watched it because <laughs> I actually found it really helpful to look up a Rakugo performance. Yeah. And there were, 
um, American people who were doing like rock or go performances at a culture fest or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And they, they do explain it and they go through it and they talk about it. Like they'd even perform in Japanese as well with like the energy. And it, it is half play half stand up comedy. Yeah. That sounds about right from what I've read so far. Cause they like sometimes like, Oh, the sometimes people open with kind of a little, like they're not in the store yet. And it's like a little icebreaker and, kind of feel yeah. the audience and out, get them warmed up a little bit. Yeah. And that's also sort of the hierarchy that they use. It's sort of parallels like American stand up comedy where you would have an open micer who's going to do maybe five, 10 minutes. Then you have an opener who's going to do 10 to 15 minutes. Then you have a middle act that's like you know, half an hour. And then, yeah, and then, then the you have your headliner who is the, the, the main person. However, in that very Japanese way, it's much stricter. There are, yeah, there are, there are words for each of those things. Right. That, yeah. Well, I just used. You yeah. specifically <laughs> have to, <laughs> but you most know, of the words were open. There are very specific <laughs> graduate titles. Graduate yeah. to the next one and you have your very specific. Right. You have to be granted teacher. that title. Well, and you're not allowed to perform. Like it, it's like a guild. Yeah. You're not allowed. That's why he getting kicked out of a school is such a big deal because you're not just going to go into an open mic night and do stand up comedy. This is Japan for God's sake. Not By the way, this is an ancient art. Um, <laughs> You know, they, one of the really cool things about this is that they sort of throw out a lot of the tropes that you get in, in other, uh, stories. So the dad doesn't like kill himself no, or he just gets an office job. Yeah. He's <laughs> depressed about it, but he doesn't give up. He, he goes and he takes care of his family. Yeah, He just does what the rest um, of us do. We all gave up on our dreams to do whatever. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a point where the, the dad's former teacher is the one now teaching Akane and she wants to formally enter the program because she, she was she was just being unofficially tutored by him before. And so he has to meet with her mom to get approval. And he's like, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this before, which is the classic like, oh, I was doing in secret. And the mom's like, she told me about it. Yeah, we knew. <laughs> it's like, of course, why would she hide that? Like she's out of the house all the time. Like she's going to tell me where she's at. So I really like those subversions. I back alley rock ago lessons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I well, really, no, that's, I mean, when you, when you first meet her in that context, after you get the story of the dad, there's some other guy showing up who I think works under the, who's another student of that guy. And it's like, they're doing the lessons in like a karaoke yeah. club room. And, and he's like, Oh my gosh, this is so scandalous. There's this young woman in here with my old, like my old teacher. And it's, yeah, it's like, no, this is, a, pay, a place that we can kind yeah. of on the download do these lessons. So it's it's those kind of things that I, I really enjoy. They they subvert your expectations. They subvert those tropes. And the other thing that makes me recommend this to literally everybody, because just because it's so well done, is the emotional beats that it hits are just so well executed. They feel real. They feel important. They don't they're not just tugging on your heartstrings just to do that. It's an integral part of the story. It makes sense. You know, you really feel like she is doing this because she loves it and because she looks up to her father and she wants to make him proud, but she also loves to do it. It's just it excellently executed. Every every chapter is a delight. Every time a new one is out, I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I'm going to read. I'll go read the new chapter. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it's a it. good time. I think my recommendation probably comes with the caveat of you have to be somewhat open to learning about this foreign cultural tradition of Rakugo. Yeah. But I feel like if you're reading a manga that is a bleeding edge one coming out on Shonen Jump, you're That's kind true. of already in <laughs> so, that park. So to be fair, I only had the vaguest sense that this was something that existed before we started reading it. And I have not looked up any information about it. The The only information that I got is what you've told me, which to be fair is a <laughs> decent amount. But the only information I really have is what I've been reading in there. And they explain it pretty well. So I don't think. Right. Uh, no, I think you would just have to be open to not finding it weird. Yeah, definitely. That That's the thing, because it is. It, it's of the various Japanese cultural traditions like this one is very unique to japan we yeah. don't have anything quite like this that i know i mean of. i would liken it to kabuki theater which is another where, thing we don't really have but yeah, like, yeah it's but that's things that i find fascinating because yeah. it's like wow this is so unlike yeah. 
what I know culturally the, from America. The, so it's, it's, a it's fun little learning exercise as well. It's very similar to Kabuki in that, like, it's similar to Western forms of entertainment, but it's different enough that it's sort of weird to us. Yeah. yeah. I, well, and I think like the weirdness factor, weird is a word that has kind of a negative connotation. Yeah. Yeah. It's just foreign. It's right. just, yeah. it's just very different. It, it makes so. you, when you, when you first get into it, it makes you go, why do they do it like this? Yeah. So if you're somebody but then who's it gonna, also doesn't matter and you get over it, you have to care about Rakugo at least a little, a little or yeah. you have to be able to understand why somebody would care about it. If you're going to look at it and be like, that's really dumb. That's a really dumb thing to get obsessed with and base yeah, your life on. If like, you yeah. think it's dumb, you're not going to like it. Well, I don't know. Cause I don't really understand why they would care about it beyond the fact that it is a traditional form of art but it's a fun thing. And then I understand that our main character, Akane is really into it because of her father. Well, the thing I will say is it does do the Japanese thing or the Japanese sports manga thing of mm, telling you why, maybe not why you should care, but why someone cares. Mm -hmm. And for me, an example of this is, is Haikyuu. I do not care about volleyball. But when I watch Haikyuu, I get very into it and I, <laughs> yeah. I start to appreciate. Well, part of me not liking volleyball is when I watch volleyball, I don't really understand what I'm seeing. I don't know how to read the court. you're not watching women's volleyball. <laughs> I don't. Shush. I, it's, that's, that is the allure of a sports manga and for other kind of related things of like uh, – reading like Hikaru no Go. It's like, I don't know how to play Go. I've got no interest in Go, but with that lens, it's a lot more interesting. And then my, the ace in the hole I always go back to is like, I Shield 21 is a football manga. I do not care about football at all. I love I Shield 21. And it <laughs> makes every game and every little moment and strategy thing really interesting and exciting. That is one of the joys of that genre is it can take something that maybe you're not really interested in in real life and make it really interesting and compelling yeah. I think that's what makes those that genre very special. Yeah, I think I think with Rakugo though, there's just that one more cultural hurdle. Yeah, that would keep me from just blanket recommending it to anyone. I'd have to I, explain to them a little bit what they're getting into. Sure, I would say if the if the relationships and the underlying story of it was not as well executed as it was. I would definitely not care because if it were just about the mechanics of Rocky, right, right. Yeah. Well, it was like Rocky and boxing or anything like that. Yeah. 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 The, the important part is not the, the act itself. The important part is what's going on around that. You just need to understand it's important to her. Right. Yeah. But you do have to be able to accept that Rocky go could be important to somebody. You, you have to just yeah. not find it totally bizarre and weird. And, and I think it. if, if, Someone enjoys stand-up comedy, uh, which is nowadays yeah. is very much storytelling. They'll understand it very easily. It's it's obviously way more regimented and I think sort it, of well, official th than than just stand-up comedy, but it's along the same lines. I think if you're somebody who has an interest in the performing arts, it's a stronger recommendation for me. Sure. Even yeah. if you're even just into podcasting or something, anything where you have to like try to get <laughs> Scripted an audience or something. No, no honestly, still. anything where you have to try to build an audience and and move up the ranks and hone your podcast. You got to get to 10,000 downloads a month or, or Squarespace won't advertise on your stuff. So. You heard him, people. <laughs> so as I said, you know, you can catch that on Viz, $2 a month and you get access to a huge catalog there. Definitely go check that out. Strong recommendation from me. Apparently not as strong from Ben, but also strong recommendation from Andrew. Big strong for me. I believe also, if it is like a lot of the other things on the Viz Shonen Jump website, is that the first couple of chapters are free and the latest couple of chapters are free. So it's usually the ones, yeah, yeah. as for all of their series, the ones in the middle are the ones you got to pay yeah, for. I so want to I wanna say like the wanna, first three chapters. If you want to dip your toe in. So you can just go check that out and then... I think you'll like it, so you'll want to pay. And, and yeah, and then when you pay that, you have access to all these other amazing series that we have both talked about and will be talking about in the future. And you get to be the cool kids that as also a new good, series uh, pop up, and you go, "That one looks cool," and you keep up with it, and then it becomes a really popular anime. And sometimes you see one, and you go, "That looks stupid," and then one day the chapters start coming out, and you feel vindicated, like a big man. 
You can also get Golden Kamui on there. Very true, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. And you know what? I personally think that between Spy Family and Akane Banashi, definitely worth $2 a month. Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, um, that's right. Jujutsu Kaisen's out on there. I'm not reading the manga, so. Uh, uh, the My Hero Academia and My Hero right. Academia Vigilantes. We have not um, talked about it yet, but we will at some point of Sakamoto Days. That is going to be coming up later. Do not worry. Kaiju number eight. Kaiju number yeah. eight. I think Tokyo Revengers is out Demon there. Demon Slayer. Tokyo Demon Revengers Slayer. is not on Viz. Is it? No, nope, oh. I don't believe so. Never mind. And all sorts of other, like I said, they've got old JoJo and Dragon Ball and yeah. a billion Yu-Gi-Ohs and all sorts of other weird odds and ends. I wish other manga sites were that cheap, honestly. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Comic Key. I've never Whatever. felt like I've never felt like I'm like yes, 100. I will always keep this subscription. It is an incredible value. You can keep up with One Piece. That's we'll, what I do. We'll have an episode. That I will talk about Comic Key on because I've never used it. They don't even know what that is. They piss me off. It's a, it's a place where you can pay to read manga, oh. which I you should you should always pay to read manga when you can. But their pricing model is insane. They charge you by the hour. No, it's cool. literally <laughs> it's keys. You have to like, buy keys like my to unlock the chapters, that. and the chapters range from one to more keys. And like older chapters cost more. So Wait, if you're you, buying per chapter and not yes. for like, I'm not, we're seems, not going to get, I will talk about this specifically yeah, on another this episode. This it's is literally a, yeah, that insane. Sounds insane. We'll do a subscription episode. Comixology, <laughs> uh, Shonen Jump. Well, we'll talk about uh, yeah. Crunchy, uh, the scan leaders. Yeah. Your, your translation. Translation issues, notes and, yeah. is when that comes up. So there we go. Review Stravaganza. Review Stravaganza. I have too much stuff to read. Likewise, Indeed. but and I'm joyous uh, for this. I'm already reading most of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everybody got at least one thing that they are interested in and want to go read. But I also hope that everybody goes and checks out everything we recommended because we wouldn't have recommended it if it wasn't great. I will personally give you a gold star if you try all of it. Where are you getting gold stars from? You will be my my special my special chosen ones. I'll tell you what, leave us a comment if, just... if you read all of them and let us know. Speaking of stars, you better leave five stars hey. on this episode <laughs> on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Audible, Good Pods. We're Good not pods. on Audible, are we? I think we are on Audible. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, what the world? Uh, I don't know. I think if you're on Amazon Music, you might just Probably. wind up on Audible. Uh, us there too. But you should definitely subscribe, follow, like, comment, all that fun stuff, social media stuff. Check out the website, animepodcasterreincarnation.com. Check me out on Twitter at Isekai Sensei. You can send me an email, Isekai Sensei Sama at gmail.com. We've got the YouTube channel. That time I got reincarnated as an anime podcaster. Please note that that's not the, f- that is not. That time I got reincarnated in, in the same, same world, world as an anime podcaster. YouTube doesn't like super long names like we do. The YouTube channel has additional content as well as the stereo version of the podcast. Stereo. Uh, stereo. Including, uh, we did a quick, fast take video uh, when we watched the first episode of Spy Family. It was a quick little review there so you can go a little and, ditty. Uh, see what we thought about the first episode. Maybe we'll do Spoiler, more. Spoiler, it was great. And uh, you can also check us out on Good Pods, which is a good place to rate and comment. Ben, you got stuff to plug? Sure. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Bembo Swaggins. You can also find me on the Words About Books podcast, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. But apparently don't listen to the last episode because we're just throwing listen all that to out. it. <laughs> I am developing an ever evolving rating system that when I am finished will perfectly tell you in one numeric score how good a book is. I am taking the qualitative and making it quantitative. Even though the that star rating had to be broken out into what each different star means. 
it's going to be further broken down into <laughs> quarter stars. Five. No, each category is going to have five levels. Oh my god! I'm not joking. It's not funny. I'm excited. <laughs> it's it not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I I'm, thought it was ridiculous enough. You're going through all these. Like, okay, I get it. Yeah, I give it half a star for style and uh, one star for word choice and. I'm going to give it zero stars for ideas. Not allowed uh, to give zero stars. I got yelled at for that. <laughs> Why can't you give zero stars? It's uh, hyperbolic. There are definitely things out there that are so bad that they deserve zero stars. I'll, I'll have to talk to you about this off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Anyway, uh, Ben's not really doing Twitch anymore, which is unfortunate. So everybody should comment on Twitter and say, bring back the Twitch stream. I am working on something for the Twitch stream. <laughs> okay. Ooh, Actually. Exciting. Andrew, you got stuff you want to plug? I'm Kermit D. Grog on Twitter. I don't really do much there besides retweet the other things that these two tweet when it evolves me because uh, I don't like Twitter that much. You can also find me on my podcast I never update called Ramble Rousers. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll turn over a new leaf. Um, you can also find me speaking of Twitch. Uh, I stream with my good buddy uh, Noah of Plus Two Comedy at his Twitch channel, Plus Two Comedy, uh, and we play puzzle games. So uh, I'm usually on there on Thursdays around 3.30. So come check us out. We should probably figure out something else to talk about on Ramble Browser sometime. I mean, we kind of have this one now, so. Yeah. there's There's got to be non-anime or manga stuff we want to talk about, right? No. I mean, I can record things with other people. You're not my right. only podcast people. <laughs> I got options. I literally have no other thoughts. So you, can you really record without all my amazing equipment? That is a really good point. <laughs> Andrew also went to ZenkaiCon recently. You should have traveled um, back in time. Okay, 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 we'll do it. So uh, I was also at ZenkaiCon a couple weeks ago. Uh, what I think you should do most is go back in time and see me live because that's the way you do it. But I also know if you go to their website... Uh, ZenkaiCon.com They have... Uh, saved versions of the stream they did, but it costs money to access them, and I don't know the level of quality on them. I can't speak to that. I haven't seen them myself, so your mileage may vary, so I'd say your best bet is go back in time and find me then. Yeah, that's what's up. Awesome. Uh, you know what, guys? I'm honestly pretty disappointed. Not one person commented on our last episode in the giveaway time frame. What well, you gotta sweeten the pot then, man. What, what well, do you got? Give it to me. That's the giveaway where we give up to three people a free PC game. All they have to do is leave a relevant comment on this episode in the two weeks after it releases. I have a huge list of games that's burning a hole through my pocket, and I want to re reward our most loyal listeners by giving those keys away. So Listeners can leave a comment on Good Pods, YouTube, Twitter, and now even the website. And we'll pick three people who, who leave a relevant comment and we'll give away these games. But you know what? I'm going to sweeten it even more. Because right now, in my possession, I have multiple volumes of manga, physical manga, that I will ship to people. If they leave those relevant comments. Oh my God. So we have, oh we'll have a list. Oh my God. We'll have a I list. I bet there's manga from some of the most popular series out today. No. No. Damn. They <laughs> no. They're, wow, they're rude. actually, yeah, there are, there's some pretty good ones in there. So um, definitely leave a comment, please. We want to hear from people. Take one of our recommendations, read it. Tell us what you think. You can tell us we were wrong. Recommend something to us, even. Yeah. We're open. What do you want us to cover? Brad reads a lot. I read sometimes. Ben is also a reader. We're a read, reedy trio. And again, literally no one commented. I know there's people listening to this. No one commented. It's so simple. You just <laughs> go out. A you type a comment. Email, Brad. Just, just, Please I just want to Validate hear, me. I want to hear from people. We do. I'm we do. I'm paying you. To comment. Yeah, literally. Yeah, pretty, I pay, yeah, we're paying you. We are giving you value for almost nothing. <laughs> so I hope to hear from people soon. 
Uh, before we close this out, I just wanted to let everybody know that the next episode is going to be coming out a week late due to some scheduling conflicts. However, there's going to be a bonus episode on the normal release day. Ben is taking charge of that, and he says he's got something special planned for me, uh, which I'm slightly apprehensive about, but be sure to subscribe or follow so that you don't miss that. It's special, all right. It should be a real fun time. I am not dead inside from what I have done. Not yet, at least. I'm not going to (laughs) ask. So once again, thanks for listening. And remember, if you get isekai'd, try and make it worth a recommendation. 